Police are still trying to find out where 15-year-old Fahad Khalil Mohammed Jabbar got the gun he used to shoot dead New South Wales police employee Curtis Cheng. There are reports he was carrying material linked to an Islamic bookstore in his backpack where he had been hiding the handgun. The Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has urged the public not to blame the entire Muslim community for the shooting and the government is urging Muslim families to reach out and seek help for children they believe are at risk of being radicalised. Hot topic this morning to discuss it, we're joined by commentator Darren Hinch and One Nation leader Pauline Hanson. Darren, are parents always going to know if their children are being radicalised? No, they're not. But radicalisation is a new buzzword at the moment. Uh, I remember when another religious group used to radicalise their young men. They'd put them in white shirts and black trousers and they'd come and knock on your door. And they were called Mormons and they didn't kill people. So it's not the radicalising of kids. Look, there's another point here too. I think that Bill Shorten was a little rash and a little speedy in his condolences for the family of the, of the shooter. Because uh, you've got the brother reportedly con told police he thought a member of his family might be involved, and you've got the sister who's fled to the Middle East. So uh, I think that may have been a bit premature. I think, yes, you go back to your question, Koshi. Yes, the families are, they are the front line, they should be watching for it, but uh, whether they will tell police or not is another matter. Yeah, gee, that makes me angry. I mean, how about the family of Curtis Cheng, a good, yes. decent, hard working Australian who walks out of his <laughs> office on a Friday afternoon? Makes me so mad. Uh, yeah. Pauline, do you think enough help is being offered to Muslim families to identify and help deal with kids who could be being radicalised? Sam, I'm so upset by all this again. Here we have another attack in Australia. People are in fear on our streets and terrorism that has touched our shores. Look, I believe that both, both um, sides of Parliament, whether it be the Liberal, Labor, Greens, National Party, are not doing enough to address this whole issue. You have to know and understand what the Quran says, and that's what people are not going back to. What the teachings of the Quran, and in sections of the Quran I will tell you this, 9.5 surah, fight and slay the pagans. 4.34, control the wives, beat them. 4.89, kill them. 4.84 surah, fight. Mm. This is all about to, yeah, to but... cause harm, to destroy those mm. who do not believe in you. Go to the source of it. We need a debate in this country. As Julie Bishop said yesterday, it was a politically motivated murder. This is not just all about, um, it's, po it's politics. We have to understand what Islam stands for. It is not compatible with our, with our country. We have to stop my immigrating more people into Australia who have Islam background. Yeah. Let the Muslim countries Pauline, take them. Pauline, I understand what, what you're saying and absolutely understand, but, you know, the Bible has some... Uh, pretty archaic things in there as well. David, that, David people, you well, can't use that it, argument. I'm sorry. We don't have that. We do that not have stuff. those so. that terrorism, that murder happening on our streets. The police have admitted there are 400 on our streets now. They're under surveillance. Mm. They're still wanting to go over there to 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 slay and kill for ISIS. Can't you understand this? This is the only religion we've had so much problems here in Australia. It's not about religion. This is a political ideology that is. Is not compatible with our culture, our way of life. Yes, the parents have to take control of this, but we need to know what's been taught in the Islamic schools and the mosques. And we still have more mosques going up in this country. I'm telling you now, and the people know it. Get out of your out of your glass houses. Go and see what's happening. Talk to the people. I, I don't think Why all are there so many Darren, Australians that rise up against them, all uh, against this religion. I'm preaching hate. There, there are by the sounds of things, and we don't know enough about this yet. There are particular uh, imams. imams out there yeah. preaching hate, and maybe they need to be focused on. But can, 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 can I put a point well, here? Yes, you're right. Yeah, the, 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 where, where, where hate is being preached, uh, there's freedom of speech. Yes, if they are guilty of inciting riots, if they're shouting fire in a in a theatre sort of thing, then they should be charged. They should be prosecuted. And if they're not uh, citizens of Australia, they should be deported. I'll make one more quick point here. I think that Premier Baird and uh, Commissioner uh, Scipioni, I think, and their praise for the special constables, that bravery was fantastic. The way they handled it, they called it terrorism. They didn't pussyfoot around like some media. 
you have done and, and yep. don't say it's terrorism. I think that was right. I think his name should have come out hours earlier, and I tweeted that over the weekend. But I think, in general, the, the Commissioner and, and the Premier did stuff there exactly the way it should be done and brought it out. Yep, totally agree.